Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Queensland Performing Arts Centre. My name's Rebecca Lemoy, and I'm the Director of Public Engagement. And on behalf of all of my colleagues here, but particularly on behalf of our special guests from Milan, the La Scala Ballet Company, thank you for joining us uh, for Talking Italian this evening, specifically about Giselle. Uh, I would also like to uh, start by acknowledging the Yagara and Turubal people, the uh, traditional custodians of the land where Kupak stands, and the thousands of years of stories and culture that they've celebrated here. Probably not so much in Italian, but we like to think this is carrying that on here tonight. Um, Talking Italian is one of about eight different projects and events that QPAC has produced to sit around this uh, season of La Scala. We produce all of these events with the intention of um, unravelling and learning a little bit more about the country that our uh, visiting com company is from, the history of the company itself, and in the case of La Scala, what an extraordinary history to have a look at, and also the art form of ballet and the content of the productions that they're going to present. So tonight you'll get a little bit um, about uh, ballet as an art form, but particularly about Giselle. Uh, there will be, I should say, uh, a chance at the end to ask questions. We are filming tonight's conversation. So if you do have a question, I would just ask that you wait for one of our front of house staff to bring you a microphone so that we can capture your question as well. And it's now my pleasure to introduce you to the person leading tonight's conversation, P Professor Sue Street, AO. Uh, Sue is the Executive Director of QUT Precincts and formerly the Executive Dean of Creative Industries. She's also very well uh, known and loved across the precinct here as a former chair of the Queensland Art Gallery and a former board member of QPAC. She's also uh, extremely uh, knowledgeable about dance and the perfect person to lead our conversation tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Rebecca. So I'll just start by introducing our two guest speakers. First of all, Ian McRae, who's had an extensive career in arts management. He's currently chair of the Australian National Academy of Music. Ian was general manager of the Australian Ballet from 1991 to 2002. In 2002, he was honoured as cultural leader of the year by the Australian Business Arts Foundation and is an officer of the Order of Australia AO. In January of 2008, he completed a five and a half year term as a member of the Australia Council where he was chair of the theatre board. Ian teamed up, teamed up with Leo Schofield to work with QPAC to produce the Brisbane International Series, which has resulted in visits to Brisbane by Hamburg Opera and Ballet, the Bolshoi Ballet, American Ballet Theatre, Ballet Prejacage, the Royal Ballet, Paris Opera and now La Scala. He is one of Australia's most respected arts administrators. Maestro Frederick Olivieri, he was born in Nice. He attended and graduated from the Music and Dance Conservatoire of that city. In 1977, he won the first prize in the Prix de Lausanne, entitling him to enter the, school, the, the ballet school of the Paris Opera. In 78, he joined the Paris Opera Ballet Company under the direction of Violetta Verdi and later of Rosella Hightower. He was appointed soloist in 1981 when Rudolf Nureyev was in charge of the artistic direction of the Parisian complex. At the Paris Opera Theatre, he danced the most important roles in the classical and contemporary repertoire, working with several guest choreographers such as Maurice Béjar, John Newmeyer, Kenneth Macmillan, Alwyn Nicolai, Alvin Ailey, Paul Taylor, Glenn Tetley and Roland Petit. He became principal of the Hamburg Ballet Company in 1993, directed by the choreographer John Newmeyer where he ended his brilliant career as a dancer. In 2002, he was appointed director of the Teatro alla Scala Ballet Company, a position he held until 2007, and again since 2016. In the interim years, he was director of the dance department of Teatro alla Scala Academy, and in October 2006, he also became director of the historic La Scala Ballet School. In 1986, he received the Leonard Messine Prize, and in 1992, Prince Rainier of Monaco awarded him the title of Knight of the Order of Cultural Merits. In July 2005, he was awarded the title Knight of Arts and Letters by the French Ministry of Culture. Can I welcome you both here this evening? Yeah. <laughs> you should have worn all your pants yeah, for no. tonight. Um, can I also... Um, can I congratulate you on the... I've now seen both of the ballets that you've brought here and I have to say that I think both of them have been exceptional. 
productions and we're very lucky to have seen both of them. So thank, thank you. you for that. Can thank I ask much. the audience how many <coughs> of you have already seen uh, uh, Giselle? Okay, and how many still to see it? Okay, okay, so we have maybe half and half. Half and half. So we won't let out any secrets, just... <coughs> So I wanted to start by asking Ian just to talk about uh, the process of getting a company to, to visit Brisbane and to come to QPAC. I understand that discussion started in 2012. So can you talk us through how that invitation came about to the company and how Giselle and Don Quixote were the, the repertoire chosen? Uh, yes, it was a, a, a long process and it actually started with John Kotsis, the CEO of QPAC here and his chairman, Henry Smerden, going to La Scala and uh, seeing a performance and walking through backstage and uh, Henry told me the other night, he said to John, uh, I think we should have La Scala here, but the whole lot, opera, ballet, everything. And uh, John apparently turned to him and said, Henry, are you mad? Anyway, John then bought the idea and initially we were looking at bringing the opera, but it just proved to be a stretch too far, as I'm sure you can imagine, uh, 400 people and all the finances that go with that. And so then we started to have a conversation uh, with uh, La Scala Ballet and uh, I guess uh, People went to La Scala, uh, people from QPAC. Uh, I had a couple of visits uh, with La Scala. And gradually we talked and then uh, contracts are produced. And the repertoire is really uh, a discussion between uh, what La Scala would have in their repertoire for a particular year, what they think would show their company off to uh, great effect in a country like Australia, and also from our side, uh, what we think uh, would be of interest to Australian audiences and uh, particularly what would sell. Um, and so these two ballets, uh, we, we did think about the fact that Giselle and um, Don Quixote, and particularly Don Quixote, it's the same production, are in the repertoire of the Australian ballet. But these productions are, in my opinion, uh, different. And I think it's really interesting to have um, t a company come from overseas and bring ballets that we are familiar with, but doing in a slightly different way. Mm. Yeah. I was going to ask you, uh, Frederick, about um, what makes ballet so powerful at telling the stories of the Romantic era. Yeah. <laughs> no, I must say that uh, it's uh, it was it's very thirty years period for the Romantic, uh, where from uh, like. Uh, 1815 uh, to uh, 1845, uh, uh, and during this period, there are many uh, <coughs> uh, literature, literary, mm -hmm. and ballet, and many things go, goes around the romantic. And I think the, what is very uh, special for for this ballet that uh, it's very uh, powerful story. That is a story from uh, even from today about uh, someone who uh, give confidence to someone and. Uh, have to be the be trialed and uh, so all this uh, um, the story it must uh, could be now yeah. but the thing is the romantic is is very specific because you have always this uh, part of um, reality and the part of uh, uh, virtuality you can say and we've always uh, the idea of uh, phantasm spirit uh, of uh, ghost or of uh, Follet, we say in, Fran in French. And uh, I must say that uh, Giselle was really particular because it was really built around this idea. So it's one of the powerful ballets of uh, the Romantic period. It's for me the essential Romantic ballet more than I can say La Sylphide or La Péry or there's many ballets like this, but uh, Giselle, it's uh, the highlight of uh, this, this period. And it, I think in the, even in one cycle, uh, to be continue to be, be a show, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, and the, the difficulty, um, the specialty of the role of Giselle is the expanse of the skill that's needed. So in the first half, she must fall in love. She's young, she must fall in love and then she goes mad. And then in the second half, she has to turn around and turn into another worldly creature that literally floats yeah. in the air. Yeah, that's interesting of the, of the, uh, for the interpretation, uh, interpretation of uh, 
for the dancer. It's, it's, I must say that for the dancer, the, what they say, want the kids, what you want to dance, or most of them say not cracker, but uh, they say usually Giselle or Swan Lake, because unconsciously I think they they like the the idea to to have two two role in one, mm. two interpretation two interpretation in one. So Giselle is their particularity to be yeah, the the story of the first act that you have seen and you will see. Uh, Later, it's really uh, clear about this to, to be uh, very pure, very uh, live in the uh, um, of the with the with the flower, with everything. With very everything is beautiful, so she falls in love. So and after there's this beautiful uh, man who is not uh, really what he seems. <laughs> what he promises. It's, it's happened sometime, <laughs> but uh, even today. <laughs> but uh, but uh, but after the, all the the particularity of the work in the in the studio, it's, uh, it's to work on this. Show sure that uh, the the technique is very essential for the for the first act. And after you, we work on the mat scene that is essential because there's many ways to do to approach the mat, mat scene to work because it's always like when you are uh, you have a great artist in front of you sometimes it could be too much it could be the artist feels something but it's too much so the 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 role of uh, the maître de ballet of the director is to modeling to mm -hmm. say that yes that too much so and to make understanding sometimes it's, uh, it's it could be difficult mm -hmm. so it must have a relation of uh, confidence absolutely mm -hmm. And I think uh, that is a very sp specific work in the studio. Yeah. The second act is really another very difficult work for the you must uh, no noise and you must float on the mm. on the on the on and stage and balance endlessly and balance if you can <laughs> with continue in, uh, always in movement a uh, balance with movement no mm. no fix no be a statue mm. that is many uh, tricks that we we learn and we can uh, work. But that's a debate that's a very strong work. Mm. Yeah, 1841 in it was first performed. So the story really hasn't changed much. I mean, and, and it's, it is a universal theme and people still relate to it. Oh, absolutely. And I, and I think one of the reasons for that is that uh, it's extraordinarily beautiful. I mean, Act Two of Giselle is, in my opinion, the most uh, beautiful act in ballet. Um, and I think, like all great works of art, um, Giselle is capable of interpretation. Uh, so does she die of a broken heart? Uh, does she commit suicide? Uh, is he uh, an aristocratic cad who's just out for a play with a girl? Or has he genuinely uh, fallen in love with this woman who I gathered from this afternoon's performance, actually, that uh, they knew each other. They must have known each other by yeah, the way yeah. they, they reacted. So yeah. he had been there before. Um, but what was his motive is, is the central question. And uh, <laughs> let me tell you a, a, an interesting story about an Australian ballet, Giselle. Uh, as Australian ballet had a production of Giselle by Dame Peggy Van Prague, its first artistic director. Mm. And in 1985, that production was uh, in a warehouse in Adelaide and it burnt down the whole warehouse and the production, except the only thing that remained was the cross. Uh, so you see, Giselle has a power that, <laughs> that, that, that we don't actually know. Spooky power. Yeah, spooky. <laughs> yeah. Um, you talked about uh, you know the skills needed for Giselle, but in fact, if you think about Giselle and you think about Albrecht, um, and apart from the acting, what what are the technical qualities that you think are essential for? But first, for first both. of all, to to. To dance and to interpret, you must be a, an artist. You must have this feeling. Mm -hmm. We can teach, we can learn. The ballet, I said, the, the work in the studio can be uh, in a in certain way. But uh, if if the the dancer in front of you is not feeling, has no emotion, is not uh, special, it's it will be a result of uh, just step after. Uh, and step and step and steps. Mm -hmm. So it's um, I think first it's uh, the relation. And uh, what is always interesting for me to see the difference with great artists, great uh, person who have feeling, who have emotion, who have sensi great sensibility, 
and the the uh, the way of the of the they want to to, in, to interpretation is they are different they are same and different mm. that's really uh, always uh, for us uh, in the studio to um, it's a satisfaction to to see and to work in this way so how much leeway do you give the how much can they be uh, bring their own artistry to those no no at the, at the beginning we we say that as you feel in the studio. Yeah. First of all, there's a choreography, because it's a ballet, it's not a theater. So that always, it's sometimes some dancer that is a thing that is more interpretation and forget the steps. Mm -hmm. The double cabriole, there's the <laughs> jump, there's. So they need to do that. That is sure. Sometimes it happens, you know, don't forget it's a ballet. <laughs> so the choreography is a choreography. And around this, more, we work on the artistic point. So is there, I can say if there are too much, we, we stop. Mm. Sometimes when you are young, uh, so young, you want to, to you think mm. that uh, when she dies, the prince must uh, go around. So he lose, so the less, do less, do maybe there. So it's a work of, uh, sometimes you have the soul, you can really <laughs> <laughs> wanted someone, so it's always. But it's nice. Uh, mm. What I, I like to work on the on the entrance of the prince because uh, in second act because it's a situation of uh, very sad, but uh, sad, but not he's not crying. It's sad inside. It's, it, it immediately with these steps, there's a em special emotion we must feel. But the the area, it's dark. It's mm. forest. It's cold. It's for me. Uh, I think. Mm. It's um, really, uh, and there's just the light of the of the cross, so we need to feel in two steps this, all this emotion, mm. and that I like to 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 have this emotion when I see uh, even different artists. That mm. is, uh, and I must say for me the second act is uh, really beautiful for the sets too, in this production. Was mm. uh, I really cure a lot the, the light and. The, because when the curtain opens, the second act, it's uh, always a big emotion for, mm. for me. Even now, mm. as I saw many times. And it depends on the production a lot too, because in, uh, for example, in Maynard Gilgood's production, Alarion is, uh, I think, uh, a dark character. Mm. Uh, and I've always wondered why he had this interest in Giselle. Mm. Um, Whereas in this production, no, it's, uh, it's it, from the very beginning, it's obvious that he loves Giselle, yeah, and nice and they have had a relationship, a friendship, maybe more, mm -hmm. and uh, and I think I find that much more satisfying actually because it gives a whole context to uh, Amazing, yeah. to Illyrian's role. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I like that too. And you've seen many productions of both of you have seen many productions of Giselle. Can you remember an interpretation by a particular ballerina that? stood out, or one of the lead roles, maybe not the ballerina, Albrecht, Giselle? Right at the moment, um, after seeing this afternoon's production where I was so deeply moved, everything else is blocked out. <laughs> 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 but yes, no, I have seen some wonderful Giselles and, mm. and I never ceased to be uh, moved by it. So what, what do you think m moved you? What was it about that the interpretation today that moved you? Well... I, I think it was, for me, in, in Act One, it was the interplay between um, Giselle and Albrecht. Um, and uh, as I was saying to Frederick uh, before, the, the Albrecht, uh, Timofey, he, he didn't overact his role. He, he had very small gestures. Um, and when, for example, um, she goes, uh, Giselle goes and shows him the jewel that uh, his uh, betrothed has given him, uh, I, I just went, I got goosebumps all over me. I mean, I was chilled by this uh, because he just stood there and you can see in his face, oh shit, uh, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so things like like that, and of course in the second act, the whole etherealness yeah. of of it. Uh, yeah, right. So, you know he, that he has come. Uh, I like to think that um, uh, that he is not a cad, and that he has deep feelings for Giselle, and that is why he follows her into the forest and looks for her, and and then she tries to save him. So that's again, you know, all of your emotions, as I said before, are touched by mm. by this ballet. Uh, uh, love, jealousy, uh, death. And for you, Frederick, any particular ballerinas interpretation that stand out? 
that you remember? Yeah. <laughs> to be careful for that. Okay. <laughs> Just between us. No, there's many great interpretations that I've, I've saw. Yeah. Alessandra Ferri was a really great interpreter for that I saw. I've saw too uh, Divudi Carla Fracci because she was, uh, oh, yeah. we talk, she was, for example, and Rudolf Nureyev for me. Uh, I yeah. saw him in Paris Opera with Noël Pontois. I remember in the Corps de Ballet what is um, the feeling when you are in the Corps de Ballet around the, the mad, mad scene mm -hmm. that is, I always watch when I see other versions, how the reaction of the Corps de Ballet is they are in it, or they they are they are doing they are doing it because they are professional, but in the way of uh, uh, as professional, not really inside. And if uh, I remember with some étoile, we were really take by the emotionally of uh, interpretation, and sometimes no. Mm -hmm. So that uh, you, you, I remember this kind of feelings. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it was uh, very cold, and nothing nothing, nothing arrived. So there was great interpreter, Margot Fontaine, there was Alessia Alonso, there's many. Uh, but uh, we have Zetlana Zakharova too, she has a great interpretation, uh, our dancer, so I don't. And just that detail actually in uh, the mad scene, your core are totally engaged in that yeah. scene. I, yeah, in more so than other productions I've seen, I think. Yeah, most of the they are like, extras mm. in, the, in this position, that they are dancer, mm -hmm. and they are in the. In the, in the all the half part of the mad scene. Mm. Yeah. So there are two parts, there are two sides. And uh, it's very important that we feel that even the peasants, they are separated by... Uh, but they are separated, but to get together in this, this vision to see that uh, there's a, a young, beautiful girl uh, become mad or a uh, mm. moment of uh, desperation. So all these feelings is very important to to give the public feel that. Mm. But I think to the music, it's really perfect for, it's, it's, everything was built around, uh, when uh, a ballet is really built music everything. and choreography and, mm. uh, and writing and everything, we, we feel. Because the music too, it's uh, always some team of the music we return, even, and maybe different, but there's a team of Hilarion, there's a team of uh, Giselle and, uh, and Albrecht of Love, we return to the, in the, in the mad scene. So and that unconsciously uh, we the public f feel something mm -hmm. after when you you know you you feel more yeah. about that. But that is very interesting about the musical team. There's mm. seven, eight team who, who return in different way of uh, orchestration. But uh, mm. it's always come. Good for telling the story. Yeah. I mean, it was an amazing creative <coughs> team. If you if you read through it all in Not the program. Not a team of Paisan, There's team musical. Uh, even the beginning of the ouverture, you come back uh, at the second act. So it's always this thinking to, to give a special uh, emotion. Uh, mm. It's interesting that you, that you could um, get that sense being behind the dancers. Mm. Um, you know, we see it from the front. Yeah. Uh, so we think we're reading the story, but you're saying but that you can, the core can feel it from the back. They yeah. can feel what's... No, it's very important that everything fits. It needs to be fit. So the dancer must be must be musical, but in this production, more really, is that absolutely yeah. everything. And I, I, I like very much the, the entrance of the second act of the Prince because there's a music mm. with the like it's really beautiful music. Mm. But there's two versions. And sometimes another music, the same music, but sometimes they play the the a part of the music and sometimes they don't play, they play only the, ba the bass, you can bass, say. Yeah. So it's, it's the same music, but it's another sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's two from the entrance. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, that's uh, two is very... One of the joys of the um, international series is that we sit in Brisbane and we get to see um, Russian dancers and we get to see French dancers and now, like the rest of the world is now one world, I think the ballet has become more one world. But I'm interested in, particularly seeing as you ran the school, about the uh, Italian, if there is an Italian style. I mean, I know in recent years people have talked about the quality of the dancers being trained in Italy. Mm. Um, so is there something particular in, in their training, do you think? I think As yes. opposed to born well, I think yes. No, because if we go all of two cycles before that, you can say that uh, all the principal dancers were Italian. 
Carlo Tagridi, Slayer, so it's fair. It was all Italian and they were all in all the world, they were dance everywhere. So they bring really something for the formation and for the the education for the for the school. Mm. I think after there's very method who, who started up in all the world they were Italian dancer. Very from the big name. So uh I know that for example uh, Zambelli was in Paris Opera and after uh, uh, before there was Cecchetti, so somebody is a student of uh, Cecchetti uh, and she comes in uh, Paris Opera and after she made uh, the school, a uh, part mm. of the school in Paris Opera. So there's always a tradition in Italian uh, in all the this school. Now at the moment, uh, I must say that I have the feeling that all the big name uh, of the company and the big name of school uh, try to to take what is the best of uh, all the school mm. i think and make uh, them well, yeah. i do the same mm. um but in the school now at the moment i must say we have the Cecchetti tradition sure yeah. but Cecchetti is really a method very speci specific so it's just to to know it's this method but we can not just have a international ballet school only with this method. So it's uh, really important to know, uh, like uh, Latin or Greek is very important to know, but after mm. you have another language. So the school for the first three years, uh, we have keep, I have kept the, the Maganova school mm -hmm. for, the, for the base. And after for the 13 until 18, it really takes the school uh, that a mix, but it's more French, but the French is more Italian. So it's not writing, it's just by word. And uh, it's a base of the coordination, really, for the powerful, but uh, the powerful in the light way, mm. to be light, but strong, not heavy. Uh, the speed, mm. the musicality, coordination, the movement, the work of the feet. So uh, every school uh, doing uh, do that, but uh, I think that the, the Scalabale school is very specific on, on this. Mm. So I can say that. What is uh, the difference in the ballet school now that um, uh, I've run for 10 years is that we, the three last year, they, they, they learn the international repertory. Okay. That is make change a lot. That the kids are at 18 with a diploma, they, are, they know really three or four ballet of Balanchine. No, no, dance already. They know Kilian, they dance Kilian, they yeah. dance Matsek, they dance Forsyth, yeah. they dance all the classical repertory, Swan Lake, uh, Part, Raimonda, Napoli. So it's really, so when they enter the company, they are ready to immediately to, to learn. They, they learn how to behave, how to work with a choreographer for mm -hmm. creation. Mm -hmm. So that's very really important from 16 to 18, for these two last year for me, that uh, the student have a, a work in this way. Because mm -hmm. the base normally they have, but it's more uh, the challenge is to to learn how to to work in for the the future. What the, will be the, the future? Because I see when I was director the first time, I see that the the student always was quite one year or two years to learn how to behave in a company. Yeah. They were like a little loose. Uh, they were really student. Mm. So now I can say so from 16, they are student, but uh, already professional. At the moment, they were at the school, they were in Abu Dhabi for performance. Now they are in St. Petersburg, they arrived today. Uh -huh. So, and it's important because the student, they are there now in the, at the end of the, the season, they, they will do the audition, I'm sure, where they will turn the code of ballet. But 70% so. of the dancers from the school oh. Uh, or 70% of the company have trained in this school? I don't count. Maybe. Oh, it's to in count. the book. Yeah, maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I think around it could be 69 or 70, 75. That, that's, that's fantastic. No, no, it's very important yeah. for me. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's strange, but it's beautiful that, uh, for example, uh, uh, some principal dancer or some dancer of the company, uh, I know them from they are uh, six years old. Mm. And they support me still, you know. Yeah. I hope. <laughs> but it's nice to have this uh, kind of work. Yeah, uh, Frederick, there's, there's also a lightness in your company, isn't it? Isn't there? Uh, as opposed to other companies. Mm. With a, a lightness. Uh, a lightness of 
dance. So, you know, you don't get thump, thump, thump. Uh, yeah. Uh, no. I like that, actually, very much. Yeah. Me? No, I don't... Uh... You don't like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah. No, I'm... Uh, as lightness, what is lightness, exactly? Lightness. Yeah. Um, uh, not, not heavy. I know. Yeah, I know. the opposite the of heavy. No, it's very... We work really on the work of the feet, of the... Of the uh-huh. of the movement in a way because we never f- absolutely feel the the force and the heaviness of dancing, mm. or the choreographer has to be that's in contemporary most of the time to be heavy to be on the floor, mm. but uh, in classical ballet you need to have the control but you, you need to be light and powerful and light that's the thing that powerful, you can yeah. see yesterday even mm. for Maria Schwal she was really uh, powerful and light. Yeah, absolutely. She was uh, she was really jumping and stop and light with time stop. So it was uh, yeah. amazing. So that is uh, I think the work that to Well Lee Christophers like who's a, a well-known critic uh, dance critic was very complimentary after the show just saying that mm. there was such uh, emphasis on the technique and he said he found the technique so beautiful that so much yeah. dance is gone going towards the spectacle. Mm. The legs really high, and the and he said this was such a uh, such a beautiful, yeah. beautifully performed technical work. I must say that I'm really uh, happy because I have a, I have a really good team mm. because they're about the ballet directors. Ballet director is responsible of everything, but uh, he, I must say I have ballet master very of the first order mm. because the principal ballet master is La Rocontardi. We were together in Etoile in Monte Carlo Ballet. And uh, Massimo Mourou is ballet master from uh, the, was it one of Scala. So this uh, two two I have more, but they are in uh, in Milan at the moment. But these two person, I must say, they, are, they really made a great job uh, on all all production, yeah. and specifically in uh, Giselle. Yeah. Ian, can you talk about um, now the international series is in its ninth year? Mm-hmm. What do you think has been the impact on? Brisbane of that, I mean, apart from our obvious enjoyment, what do you think has been the impact of that series? Well, when we <coughs> started out in 2009 and Paris Opera Ballet was the first company that uh, came here, uh, one of the objectives was to uh, assist to make Brisbane a cultural destination. And uh, I think over the years that's one thing that certainly has been achieved because you know, 20 to 25 percent of the audience come from interstate. So it's, it's, I think, a really good idea to have something rooted in one city and bring the audience to that particular city. Mm-hmm. It's, it's also a function of, uh, of funding nowadays that that's actually easier to achieve uh, in that way. But I think one of the uh, <laughs> real penalties of uh, being isolated, like Australia is, right at the bottom of the world, um, I mean, there are many advantages to that, but uh, the disadvantage is that we don't easily see what's going on in the rest of the world. And so I think this series, uh, it has an, as an objective to bring uh, these great companies uh, here so we can actually see works that we would not otherwise uh, see. And I think that's been a really important <coughs> achievement. And I do believe that more ballet uh, assists ballet. So the more people see, mm. the more people want to see. And so I, uh, I mean, maybe Lee mightn't agree with me, but uh, I do think that uh, one of the impacts that uh, the international series has had is to bring um, audiences to the Queensland Ballet mm. and to the Australian Ballet for their Brisbane seasons. Mm. Um, and I, I think that's been a, a significant achievement. Mm. Uh, I think that's true, that there have been people who, have, who would never ordinarily see ballet who have come to the International Series and been converted. I, I know a fellow in my office who went with his family for the first time to an International Series Ballet and subsequently has now goes to Queensland Ballet. So I think that's yes, absolutely I, right. <coughs> Over the years, I've spoken to a number of people who have come and they've seen Hamburg or whatever, and uh, they have said, oh, this is the first time I've ever been to ballet, uh, and uh, I will now uh, subscribe to the Queensland Ballet, and I think that's fantastic. Mm. Uh, th- there are a lot of uh, people, and particularly men, of course, uh, I used to find this at the Australian Ballet, that. Uh, sponsors would bring groups of people who had never been to the ballet before and inevitably uh, these men would say to me 
I've never been to the ballet before, and my God, I never knew it was like this. Uh, yeah. And they're impressed, particularly with the athleticism, of course, mm. um, uh, which is something they suddenly realise they can't do. Mm. <laughs> and and has, the, has distance been an issue, Ian? Have people said, oh, no, we couldn't possibly travel all that way with dancers and sets? And Has that been an obstacle or...? <laughs> Sometimes it's an obstacle um, and you need to overcome it and you need to uh, persuade people because people in Europe have this idea that it's a long, long, long way away, much further than it actually is. Maybe you had this uh, feeling as well. Yeah. And uh, so you need to talk to them about the logistics as to how that would uh, be achieved, what the flights would be, how long, what would be, hap what would be waiting for them at the other end, etc. Sunshine, beaches. <laughs> <laughs> Frederick, I wanted you to talk a little bit about um, the Concor mm. uh, process in the company, which is a little bit different from how it works in Australia. This is the, the system by which dancers are promoted through the ranks of, of the company. Um, so can uh, the Concor, it's not every year. It's not like Paris Opera, like... Uh, there's some uh, many ranks, so and that every year there's a concours. They have the place or no place they made. Uh, here it's when we have enough place, we made a, a concours, and so for the dancer who are not yet in the company, but for many years they could uh, stay uh, like uh, a contract, like uh, not really corps de ballet, like surnumeraire corps de ballet, and uh, but they are from the company, but uh, they are, cannot pass so. And so, first of all, to, to be fixed, to become stab, stable, we stay fixed in the company. Yeah. And after to become solist and principal dancer. So it's just uh, like, uh, it's happen, uh, an often uh, uh, company anyway, if to have the class and after there's some variation and so we have uh, the possibility to pass. And it's always, uh, there's a commission of uh, five or seven people and person vary with uh, one or two member from ex external member. Mm -hmm. And um, so we decide then to to pass. You know. There's a possibility too to pass, like from uh, uh, me, I, I can have the director, the ballet director could pass someone uh, like this uh, mm. as principal dancer. Or I've done it uh, in the first period. But I think the concours is nice too because it makes uh, everybody, it works in the, for something. And uh, anyway, it work for something. In this idea, they, they will make uh, many progress during this period to work and work and work for for this. So, so, so do, you, do you select the repertoire they will perform? I mean yeah, there's uh, some variation uh, okay. uh, obliged. Like to, uh, and after they can uh, choose another version. Okay. To, to, so Where, is, uh, whereas here in Australia, it's totally in the hands of the artistic directors. Promotion mm. from corps de ballet up through the ranks to principal yeah. is, uh, is their decision alone. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I must say that uh, it's possible to do in, in this way too, but uh, for many years now we, we, we work about the idea of concours to, to make uh, the possibility to everybody to, mm -hmm. to have the possibility and the chance to, to show mm -hmm. themselves, even the, the young who just enter, they, 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 they can pass, try to pass the concours for principal dancer. Anyone. And uh, so maybe uh, the director of, or the person could, could see uh, something that maybe he has not seen in, the, in this moment. So it's, it's quite always uh, good to, to have mm, this moment. To give them all a chance. Mm. But I'm yeah. sure there are tears sometimes when the promotion doesn't come. Yeah, mm. it's always uh, that is, is there one, one, one post, one place, uh, one. Uh, one or, or, so one promotion, so it's one. So. Mm. And perhaps the concourse system minimizes mistakes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, we, we try, if I, it's, uh, I must say we have just done now in June, last, uh, no, last March, we have done a con concours. We, I passed many solists, uh, the commission passed many solists and two principal dancers, that's Timofey, it was mm -hmm. corps de ballet. And directly from corps de ballet, as uh, principal dancer, mm. and so he's dan and he's dancing as principal dancer. So he's uh, and Martina Mart Arduin too. Mm -hmm. So there's two uh, in corps de ballet, and so now they can con concentrate more on the principal role. So it's changed the life even for the solisto. I think it's uh, understandable. Good. Two beautiful dancers. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I'm very <laughs> proud of them because they are really. I must say, uh, what is a particularity of his company is that's really hard worker. 
mm. I must say. Because usually the company, I know many companies, and the class, for example, in the morning, the ballet class for the professional is more, sometimes more like a, a warm-up, yeah. you know, the class of the company. So we go to the class, not to uh, class to, to make progress. So, but in these companies, they have a, and that's very important, mm. this, this uh, way to think that the, the class is very important and uh, to work, yeah. not to just to warm. Yeah. Mm. And the plans when you get home, I, I, I read that the company's doing Wolf Works, that was, yep. that the Royal Ballet brought that uh, yep. to Brisbane, we, we, mm. and uh, it was nominated for a Helpman Award, it didn't mm. win the Helpman Award, I can't remember what won now, I think it might have been an Australian Ballet production, but we yeah. loved that production. Yeah. Is that, is that the first time? Yeah, yeah, because it's, there's an exclusivity of Royal Ballet, they have an exclusive, so the choreographer and the, uh, the director who are... Uh, I know very well, uh, give the opportunity to, to La Scala Ballet to have the possibility to, to do it in Scala for the first time. Mm. And we are the first company after Royal Ballet that will present this production. So when McGregor will come, and uh, it already comes two times and choose already uh, the list, the cast, we mm. do in April. Be before that, we have uh, another very important moment that we are going uh, uh, the first creation for the company of Angelin Préjocage. Okay. He's doing for the company Winterreise, mm. A new work? Yeah, a new yeah. work, creation. Okay. And uh, Winter Eyes of Schubert, yeah. Okay. So it's, uh, one, it's one singer and one and piano. And so it's a new production, so new set, costume and creation. So are very, we, we, we start the 28th November. When we just come back, we have a few days rest, and there's a group who are doing Nutcracker of Balanchine, new production, because new set and costume. And another group who work on this creation. So it would be separate, two groups separate. So and, that, um, and people here will remember that uh, Perjacage's uh, Snow White came Snow here. Snow White. Mm. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. I know him very well. We are done in his company. L'Annonciation, La Stravaganza, Le Parc, already in the repertory. So first, first creation is very important for, for us to have from this, this type of choreographer. Mm. Yeah, dancers will love it. Um, have the dancers enjoyed Brisbane? Yeah, everybody. Yeah? <laughs> everybody wants to stay here. <laughs> <coughs> everybody from the city, fantastic. Oh, that's the lovely. The way of life, no, the way of life. Uh, I think the city is made uh, to, to make the people who go out of the uh, apartment to make everything easy. Mm -hmm. So it's always something complicated, but in the, the way of to live in the city, Everything uh, in the street, in the restaurant, everything at the theater, mm -hmm. everything is uh, made the uh, less problem. So to help, even the the, the way of the, the architecture, the, the, mm -hmm. uh, the along the uh, uh, around just around the theater is wonderful area too. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the coffee? coffee? They've been happy with the coffee. Yeah, I'm French, so it's okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I'm not so <laughs> expresso. Because the Italians are very... No, espresso is quite uh, It's strong. important, huh? Yeah, usually I think <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> long <laughs> still. <laughs> I wonder if the audience have some questions that they would like to ask of our guests. If you could just wait for the <coughs> microphone because they're recording. There's a... Uh, okay, there's the microphone. Questions? There's oh. a woman. There's there's one? There, there, is a, there is one here. There's one here. Here. Oh, here too. We can't hear you, sorry. Is it turned on, this mic? Uh, up close. Oh, that's better. Thank you. I, I have a low voice. I found last time, th th this, this time here, when I, uh, when I had the first uh, show on, uh, I found it was your people danced very light and they danced smoothly and they, they glided. Mm. And I found the friend was really, I really found it was very, very good. I enjoyed it immensely. Oh, that's so lovely. I'm coming, yeah, I'll come back again. Yeah, I hope, <laughs> <It was lovely. laughs> I hope to come back. Good. Yeah, yeah, it was lovely. I really enjoyed everything. I love the music. So I've got tickets for everything. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. Thank you very much. 
We enjoyed we enjoyed to to be to be on stage then, so I'm really happy. Um, I'm one of the interstate visitors who's been here for everything. I saw um, Eric Brune and, and Sonia Arava before the Australian Ballet was formed, and that was it. <laughs> I've got to go and see everything. But I've only got a ticket for one Giselle this afternoon I saw it, and I can tell the people who haven't seen it, you are in for a treat. Mm. I wept the whole second half. <laughs> And not only I, the lady who let me in at door seven also was weeping and we wept together after the oh. show. <laughs> and the audience gave an, a, a standing ovation acknowledgement. And then I also met um, a gentleman from Singapore who has bought a ticket for every show. And he's telling me I must go and see this dancer and that dancer. He said the last night's dancer is dancing tonight. I have found it like asking at the box office, I can't find out who is dancing when. Mm. So my question is, first of all, a practical one. How do you find out who's performing? They just don't seem to have cast lists. And then can you address the differences in the dancers? Yeah. You know, I think for the Giselle and for Don Quixote. Yeah, I think it, all the cars are on the website. Yes, yeah, so if you sure. go to the QPAC website and but, go uh, into Giselle. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure someone here will be able to get that information to you. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Of the three Giselles. Yeah. The and the Don Quixote, because I'm coming on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> how they are? How they dance? The, the, the differences between them, maybe the interpretation of the three Giselles. First of all, they are all they are very very good. <laughs> 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 No, I must say one is more. One could be more powerful, one more uh, sophisticated. Uh, even for Giselle, even for Don Quixote, one could could be more uh, really technically very strong for the part of the third act. If we talk about Don Quixote, and uh, another could be more spirit, yeah. special as interpretation. For even for Basilio, one could be really. Uh, uh, in an easy way, like normal uh, person as uh, today, and be on stage and interpretation of uh, of Basilio. One could, could stay in this kind of um, rank of classical dancer, and uh, so I let always this kind of uh, character in particular. What is important? It's the quality. So if there's a quality for me, it's. Uh, we can uh, see all these different mm. quality and honesty for me is two words are very important for the for in our world mm. in every world I think but mm. uh, in our artistic world I think is essential mm. but like you know I think that's the lovely thing about ballet and art mm. is that people have a different response to different interpretations uh, whether it's an artwork or a ballerina yeah, or a I think that's the lovely thing about art, that we see something different, that different things make us, yeah, give be. us the, um, what, how did you describe it? The goosebumps and yes, the hair yeah. standing up mm. on the back of your neck. And it must be, you know, it's boring, you can say. Otherwise it's boring. the same. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the dancer, what is interesting to us, not only principal dancer, but the corps de ballet and the baby, the word substitute, there are a of, so few who are not on stage, but they are substitute and they uh, they wait to be on stage, uh, but they are in the wings and they watch uh, uh. The, their friend doing a paysan par or some solid role, but they watch the principal dancer and, and they take, mm. they absorb. And they, so I, I, for me, it's very important to see that. And even the, the Giselle who danced today watch the Giselle of yesterday. Yeah. So it's always not something to take. Yeah. Bad or good? I remember my teacher say you can you need to watch everything. You can decide that is no, yes is yes. Mm -hmm. Important to see. Yeah. So it's, I, I I really always push in this way. Mm. I had a question about uh, choreographers. Do uh, I'm not particularly f uh, familiar with Italian choreographers making a strong mark internationally with new choreographies and perhaps new adaptions of classical mm. pieces. Mm. Would you be able to tell us if the Scala actually supports 
Italian, specifically Italian choreographers and who they are. Mm. And the second part of the question would be staff choreographers who are mounting a piece that we're seeing like Giselle or uh, Don Quixote. What is actually their function? The, th these are choreographies that go back to the 19th century. And are they adapting that in some way? Or are we basically seeing a very classical choreography mm -hmm. with very little change going back to the 19th century? Okay, so that, these, these two ballets, they are, they are protect, these two ballets. So there's, there's a, first, it's Fondation Rudolf Noyev. There's a big organization. And so to have the ballet, well, it's, I work a lot in Paris Opera, so I know the, the, this, this, this person. So they, they always, when, we, when you want a new ballet of Noyev, they send someone of the foundation. We, we know the repertory, we know the choreography, and comes and set the ballet in full. So you have many names that they go around the world. And uh, so when you have the ballet in repertory uh, from many years, so we, they always send, uh, even if they doesn't want, I think it's always good that we, someone comes from the foundation and uh, have uh, eyes uh, new, we can say, and uh, comes 15 days and see and made some little change. And so for this production, it was, uh, it was Florence Claire, it was a toile of Paris Opera, and uh, she works on the uh, on Don Quixote. And this time she stayed quite long because uh, she's uh, she was guest teacher too for the company. So they they have this, this person who, who are in charge of the choreography and the, the ballet master they, who knows already the choreography, they adapt the new little change. Uh, it could be very few, or the, but sometimes there's this little uh, changing. But the base is always very strong, very clear. Same for Chauviré. Mm -hmm. Chauviré is the same, uh, it's Florence Claire, but in the first time. And the right is, uh, because uh, Mrs. Chauviré, she, she died last year, so. And um, there's uh, the, some, uh, the choreography deposit, so there's a person, Mrs. Forgeron, who is uh, at the right, and uh, so she gives, uh, possibility, yes or no, to have this production. Mm. And we keep uh, the tradition choreography. And come someone, same, and set the ballet and uh, make uh, this. And, uh, so it's very sp specific choreography, uh, this of uh, Ch uh, Chauviré version, mm. even for the second act. M um, lots from uh, Myrta. It seems the same, but it's not really the same. Mm. So it's important to keep and to stay this tradition. And, can, can I just add something to that? I, I have found in my experience that there has been a difference between having the choreographer there for the remount of a production as against if uh, he or she has died, having someone uh, come from a, a foundation to represent the choreographer. Because the choreographer is, in my opinion, more likely to say, oh, this is not working on you, let's do it like this. Whereas the, the person who is... Uh, representing uh, a dead choreographer will say, oh, no, 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 uh, Rudy or Kenneth would have wanted it like this. Bang. That's it. And mm. it particularly, I think, in the case of Kenneth Macmillan ballets, uh, mm. the repetitors who come to mount those ballets uh, want it to be exactly as Kenneth wanted yeah. it to be. We've done now, just before to come here, we have done the seventh performance of Manon in, uh, in Scala. And the part was we have in a repertory we have done two years ago. So the, the ballet was set by the ballet master and arrived uh, two supervisors. And they made a little change. And oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> a little, little, that's our insurance. But it was uh, on four, but now you, you can do on eight. Okay, you can do yeah. on eight. So yeah. it's just, uh, but it's always in the, in the, in the, in the very, in the quality, in the vision of... Uh, but the, the really the this, this person who are in charge are really uh, uh, fidel. It's like um, the choreography for them. They are really, and it must be like this. They are really uh, fidel. We say fidel. We say fidel. Yeah, uh, yeah, fidel. Yeah. Integrity. Yeah. Integrity. Faithful. Faithful, faithful. <laughs> faithful to the choreographer. Yeah. So that absolutely. Yeah. So that really. Uh, it must be like this. For the choreography, Italian choreography, that it's always, uh, I think it's a general problem in, in Europe, because uh, maybe less in Germany, but um, we have uh, some chore Italian choreography, but it's always difficult for 
economic problem for the problem to to have a, a place to 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 create to have a, to be recognized to to create in in uh, many years so you have uh, some choreographer who go who goes out of italy so name but at the moment one of the our best choreographer and known choreographer is Mauro Bigonzetti who is doing a lot in uh, in um, in Italy and Europe and all the world in New York in Russia uh, is very famous choreographer but I think that uh, it's something that we 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 need to work a lot to to make the future choreographer mm -hmm. and the future uh, new uh, choreographer for the next uh, 30 years mm. in 30 years because now who is doing and uh, the only problem that the, the dancer want to dance and young choreographer it's very difficult to find uh, because it's something really uh, you need to have the possibility to do it mm. you cannot do like this it might be in the really situation to have the possibility to have a group to have some dancer so we have some choreographer from the company who have done some uh, Creation or ballet, we have uh, five, five, six dance of the company who have already done some creation in in the company. But after, I think the thing that after they need to to continue mm. because we cannot have every year the same name in the in the theater. That's impossible. So they, we, we give the chains, but after they they need to have a, a other opportunity outside. Mm. But I hope. Uh, uh, the Italian choreography could uh, grow because uh, the Italian uh, 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 person is very imag imagination mm -hmm. and very rich uh, the artistic way in the way to see and to feel uh, uh, every uh, the sensibility of the of the heart, mm -hmm. but not only ballet in every every. So I must say that is a particularity of the Italian uh, uh, passione. Nazione. It's the French who say that. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm half Italian. So yeah, okay. oh, there you go. No, but that is really nice because they are immediately in two words. There are something. Uh, there are the lights. Uh, a world open, mm. and uh, so they enjoy everything uh, in a very beautiful way. Mm. So I would say that. I've got a rather technical side. Uh, I've spent about 40 odd years of musculoskeletal sports medicine. I've dealt with a lot of elite dancers and sporting people. You made a comment just a few seconds ago that dancer always wants to dance. Do you have any problem with the dancers who develop injuries and want to keep going, in other words, making their problem worse, or do you have a mechanism of making sure that they get the early treatment and manage properly? Because to me, I have seen a number of very good sports people and dancers fall apart once they've got an injury. Mm -hmm. Is it a problem to you? Uh, and knowing that point, the dancer wants to dance. They want to do everything and they'll cover up everything, as yeah. you probably well yeah. know. I'm curious, is it a problem and how big a problem for you? Yeah, the dancer want to always want to dance. The, the, even the students, so, uh, the students, we are, I remind like two months ago, we made a meeting that uh, absolutely the kids, the students, if they have the problem, they absolutely need to, they, Absolutely, I was obliged to say something, mm. not say that last minute. So we have we have doctor in the, in the school, we have a, an orthopedic very with the same orthopedic from the from Scala. So uh -huh. he's coming to the school and uh, he's the main time in Scala, three times a week in Scala and one time in the in the school. And we have physiotherapist all the all the time in uh, in the school and in the in the company. The thing that uh, yes, absolutely, the, the doctor is very important because he, he me are always. Uh, uh, if say this, this person needs stops immediately stops even she says no I don't want to no you stop mm -hmm. that he is uh, we n never can't joke uh, about uh, the 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 elf that is essential because the dancer have only one instrument in the body mm -hmm. so only one we can, piano you can change it body no mm -hmm. so it's very important that uh, even from the school they they, they learn uh, in uh, to know and to react. And to 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 f to feel the 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 sign the, the signal uh, of the signal of the of the body when is uh, but it's difficult because when you you love your your work and you mm -hmm. you are in charge of uh, artistic and very deep and pure and strong sensation it's very difficult to say I stop for one month but uh, it's important that uh, 
it must be like this. At the Australian Ballet, we, we also had this, this issue. And, you know, in, in the bad old days, dancers would not want to go off, as you say, and they would dance on, and then they would have a very serious injury that would take them mm. out for a long time. And the work cover bills become enormous in those situations. And so we invested heavily in a, a, a good medical team mm. and encouraged dancers to report injuries immediately. And we found that more often than not, they were back within a week. It was quite extraordinary, yeah. the change that that brought about. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. If, for example, here we brought our, our floor, splitting floor with Spring. the floor where. Yes. So now uh, we have in Scala, but now in all the two uh, we have we, we is, because it's really mm. better for yeah. the, <laughs> for more for the man for the jump like. Yeah. 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 yeah <laughs> so yeah. from my time there was not. <laughs> but it was interesting that Giselle last night is 44 years old. So she's dancing the. Is that his secret? Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell to me. Yeah. In, in this room, in this room. So that's... No, that's she's fantastic. Amazing. She's one of the great amazing. Uh, interpreter at the yeah. moment. Fantastic. She's amazing. I saw Onyegin and Juliet. Onyegin, she's uh, fabulous. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I can yeah. imagine. Well, tell her we think she's fabulous. She's uh, arti a great artist. Well, that's the end of our time. Um, Ole. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for your wonderful questions. And um, for those who haven't seen the ballet, you're, as the lady up there said, you're in for a treat. And to our two guest speakers, thank you very much. Thank you.